Hey there, Change Agents, it's Tim Kelly. Um, wanted to talk to you a little bit about how voices and voice dialogue play into the work that you do with your clients. Um, talk a little bit about uh, a group of voices I call the usual suspects. Um, just a little background that for many years, the only way that I dealt with the fears that my clients had of finding their purpose and living their purpose was by talking to their individual voices using voice dialogue. Now, I'm not suggesting that's the work, the work that you're doing with your clients, but the things that I found may prove useful to you in terms of which voices are most likely to come up and interfere with the work that you're trying to do with them. So if you're a therapist, um, then around any individual complex or neurosis or pathology that you're working with, there's likely to be a host of voices tangled up around that specific issue. And voice dialogue would help you to unwind that. But what I want to talk about is more about um, coaching your clients towards their goals, towards their dreams, towards their purpose. So the client comes to you wanting to achieve something, wanting to become something. And then as you start to help the client move in that direction, they start to resist. Now that's not because they've changed their mind necessarily, but because not all parts of their psyche are on board with the goal. And as I've talked about in some previous videos, what's really going on is that the voices in the client that want the goal have hired you as a mercenary to help them in their battle with the voices that don't want the goal. <clears throat> and what I want to talk, talk about in this video is the voices that don't want the goal because there's certain patterns that show up. So uh, I've talked before about the inner critic. This is a very potent one that uh, often the inner critic fears that if the person achieves their goal and becomes who they really could be, it will disprove the inner critic's case and that the inner critic won't have a job anymore. And so it usually has a pretty strong incentive to prevent them from growing and improving and keeping, keeping them believing basically that they're inadequate. Uh, and that they're not worthy of what's going on. Some other key voices that get in the way, one is the skeptic, whose job it is to doubt everything. And so this part actually doubts that transformation is possible, doubts that they can achieve their goal, and may doubt your motives as well. This can be very potent interference as you coach them forward. I've actually had um, this voice of my clients uh, fire me one time. <laughs> it was one of the very few times I ever gave a refund was when the client's uh, um, skeptical voice called me up on the phone, basically, and told me that all the stuff that I was doing was a crock and uh, ended the coaching relationship. So this can be a very powerful um, one as well. Uh, another interesting one is some clients unconsciously, out of loyalty to their parents, there are child parts that feel obligated to make sure that they don't exceed their parents in some way. That is, that they are not meant to be uh, earning more money than their parents or happier than their parents or something like that. And this voice will sabotage any efforts you make to improve their lives out of this sense of loyalty to the parents. And these voices and the beliefs they hold are usually completely unconscious. Um, and uh, of course, the, the granddaddy or grandmommy of them all in terms of inter Well, uh, before I get into the really big one, let me say that uh, image manager voice, the uh, image consultant, often has a very powerful part to play in resisting because it is concerned that uh, achieving the goal that they will either succeed or fail Ultimately, the fear is a fear of failure and therefore it will damage their image and maybe they shouldn't shoot so high uh, because of the potential risk to their image. But I alluded a moment ago to the, there's one voice in particular that really gets in the way and this is the wounded child voice. The wounded child voice is the one that feels inadequate, feels worthless, helpless, victimized that deep in their heart they know, as many successful people do, that they're actually a fraud and they are not worthy of the goal that they're trying to manifest. And the wounded child voice specifically is the one that carries this set of beliefs and very importantly this set of emotions. And as long as it's unconscious, which it almost always is unless they've done a tremendous amount of cathartic work, this voice will block them from going on and being successful, especially because it fears that if they are successful, it will be left behind. And these feelings will be uh, suppressed forever and the wounded child will never be able to come out of its little cave or its little cell. So this is just a tour of some of what I call the usual suspects. There are others, of course, but uh, of course, risk management voices get in the way all the time. 
um, but they're usually more conscious. So uh, there's a whole array, as you can see, of conscious and unconscious ones. One other key point I want to make, which is about belief clearing systems. So some of these things that I'm talking about may sound to you like beliefs, and they are. But if you try to clear the beliefs without dealing with the part that's holding and managing and caring for that belief, what you may find is the part will resist the belief clearing method. And if you successfully clear the belief over its objections, it will then seek to reinstall it later. My good friend, uh, Lion Goodman, the creator of the belief closet system, says that a part is really a belief that has a sense of its own existence. We'll talk more about that in the voice dialogue training. Um, and so what happens is when you try to clear a belief that a part has some attachment to or relies on, it will prevent it from happening. And if it can't prevent it from happening, it'll wait till you're gone and it will put it back. So even belief clearing methods may not be enough on their own if you can't talk to the part that is attached to that belief remaining true in the client's mind. Uh, don't despair. All this stuff can be dealt with fairly easily if you can deal directly with the parts. It's if you can't talk directly to the parts that dealing with this stuff can take a very long time and sometimes can seem impossible. And it can go on and on and on. Personally, I'm a huge fan of rapid transformation, which is why I love to talk directly to my clients' parts so we can move through this stuff relatively quickly and get on to the really cool and fun stuff. Thanks so much.